Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Joel, for setting this up. And before we even get into our program, I want to remind everybody that next week on Timeline, Steve Novak of the Watkins Museum will join me, and uh, we're starting kind of a regular programming with Steve every other month on the second Tuesday. Uh, he's going to be joining me and a uh, second Tuesday, second Monday, and we are going to um, talk about all things Douglas County Historical Society. So that's next week. But in the meantime, I have one of my favorite people on the line because every year I do a program for New Year's Eve, and Don Hughes has been on it every year. Kansas Highway Patrol person, Don Hughes, who t- this morning tells me He's in the K dot parking lot in Atchison, Kansas. So these are the miracles of of radio. Good morning, Don. Good morning, Kalise. Hey, <laughs> thank you for those nice words. <laughs> well, you are one of my favorite guests. So I want you right now to mark your calendar for December twenty eighth, twenty twenty. That's going to be our New Year's Eve show, and I want you to be sure and be there. Okay. And if you have any other anybody else you want to bring with you, fine. But you and I could easily do an hour together. And we're doing this program because when you were on uh, for New Year's Eve in 2019, you talked about needing a time slot because this issue is so important to you and all of the members of the Highway Patrol, Sheriff's Departments, Police Departments, because we are now in the season when the workmen are out doing all those fabulous things that need to be done to keep our highways and roadways safe. And you also suggested that we invite uh, Kelly Coltsala to join us, and she is the public relations person for KDOT. Kelly, are you there? I'm here, Clonice. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> well, thank you. As I said, someday we'll actually meet and have coffee. Well, I know uh, <laughs> that you and Don are really uh, on this, and I have been noticing, and I bet some of our listeners have been noticing, from time to time on television, little PSAs about workplace safety. Uh, who's responsible for those? You know what I'm talking about? Yep. Many of those are from the federal government. Um, okay. And uh, I just don't remember Don, any any other year of seeing those, but it just it just raised uh, my consciousness a little bit because of the uh, topic we're going to talk about today. So, uh, right. Don, do you want to start with how you see this, or Kelly, you begin? I since we can't see each other, uh, one of you just okay. start out and tell us uh, what we're talking about here. Well, the week of April 26th is um, National Work Zone Safety Awareness Week, and that's when we uh, really try to bring awareness to the public about the safety involved with driving through, you know, work zones. We have several of them ongoing right now. Um, In 2018, which is the latest information I have, in Kansas we had over 1,400 work zone crashes. Um, and so this is really dangerous for uh, our workers along with city, county, um, other highway road workers, highway patrol, um, other law enforcement officials. And so it's really important for people to be aware uh, as they're driving through these work zones. I know when I started with KDOT last August, one of the first things we did was go out on a work site on I-35 in the KC metro area. And I, so I'm down there on the work site, and there's a concrete barrier between me and people going 70, 75, 80 miles an hour on I-35. And it was eye-opening. And it's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the thing that we have to realize is that there's only a, a small window when you all can get this done. So you've got to do it when the weather is right, and traffic has to cooperate with that, or when the weather is bad, their roads will be even worse than what you're trying to fix. So if it's, you know, we all have to cooperate. If we're going to social distance uh, for the pandemic, maybe we should be doing a little social distancing for work zones. Maybe we can make a little transition here in the sense that, 
the awareness of this, uh, we are all given plenty of warning. Isn't that right, Don? That's correct. And you are helping us out by, by hosting this segment on your show. Uh, there are just far too many crashes and deaths that occur uh, in the work zones. The, the public work professionals, uh, transportation people that are out doing what needs to be done to keep our roads safe for us, uh, whether it's hanging up new signs that have been knocked down or faded out or coming along and uh, repainting the, the stripes on the roadway to keep uh, so we can tell it's a no-passing zone. You know, we really need to make sure we're keeping an eye out for those professionals while they're working. And, you know, I, I was thinking uh, when Kelly was talking a metropolitan area, uh, that 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 can be kind of a nightmare, not only for the workers but but for the drivers. It's it's a labyrinth of of instructions and exits and uh, alterations, and uh, so you have to be very 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 careful. And sometimes I think because it's so obvious. Maybe people are paying a little better attention. But, you know, I, I live out south in Douglas County, and I think about uh, coming up on a uh, hill on a country road, uh, the, you know, where there's uh, something going on from Douglas County Public Works. And those people deserve our careful, careful awareness. And it's really easy to be going down that road and right over the hill there's something that uh, someone is working on. And so... It's everywhere, and I would think also this is the season that the farm vehicles are out. So I would imagine that that kind of adds to the chaos of of working on a road while people are trying to use the same road. Yeah, if if people that are driving just would pay attention to their driving rather than trying to read their texts or answer their phones, or put on makeup, or read a book. We've seen or eat all breakfast. of that on <laughs> And none of those are funny things. I'm getting kind of a funny image, but you're right. None of those are funny things. Uh, you know, what? what is it that the workplace people, the work zone people do besides they, they wear uh, neon vests, right? Or uh, what are the colors that we should be watching for? Fluorescent orange and yellow. Uh, uh, orange is the color for work zone safety awareness. But our workers wear, you know, a certain type of fluorescent vest, a certain type of hard hat, um, steel-toed shoes. We have all kinds of signage, digital signs, um, arrow boards, uh, traffic cones. I mean, we, we do everything we can to be as safe as possible in the work zones. And once in a long time, you have to actually shut that part of the road down because it's too dangerous to even let people go whizzing by while they're, while they're working. Isn't that right? I mean, sometimes you do have to have yep. a few little detours. Yep. There's often times where we'll close a lane or move a lane over, close a ramp, you know, have a detour. Sometimes mm-hmm. we just have to close roads. We prefer not to if we can help it, but oftentimes for safety reasons, you know, it'll have to be done. So, Don, when you are out patrolling, uh, what uh, does this? Do you increase uh, the the uh, the coverage? I mean, do you add add patrolmen in certain areas when this is happening, like in a metropolitan area, or how do you alter your schedules with the highway patrol? Well, we work closely with KDOT, and a lot of times they'll have a program uh, that will allow us to go out and work in those work zones while the the uh, work zone work is being done. Uh, they will they will ask for extra patrols, and we will do that. Good, good. It happens many times. Yes, uh, it's not on every project that there's no way that that could you know financially be done, but a lot of the big projects that need to have someone in the work zones uh, will be there. And then they're also uh, just a normal part of the routine of just driving and patrolling. We know where the work zones are at, and we, we drive through the trailer just on our own, besides being assigned to one. 
Well, and we live in, you know, a more congested, If I don't know if we could ever call Kansas congested, but the area of the state where we live is, is busier, has more roadways, more metropolitan areas, more people driving. Uh, but this doesn't mean that people shouldn't be paying attention as they're going west on I-70 or, or southwest on I-35 because uh, people get up to pretty big speeds on those roads, even though... Uh, there may not be as many exits and off ramps and uh, considerations as we have right in this part of the state. I think about you know uh, the speeds get a little little higher. I know I, I, it's very tempting when you leave Topeka and you see open road ahead of you to just uh, drive a little faster. So I think that would be its own own set of problems too during these work zone times. Yes, yeah, speeds. Uh, when those speeds increase, it gives you less time to react. And that's why it's important that uh, uh, we're trying to get out there and be aware that hey, it's the season uh, is seen more regularly. And uh, keep your heads up. We're up there posting, like uh, Kelly said. We're using those message boards to advise people. We're, we're putting out signs way in advance to give people enough notice to start slowing down and moving over to the correct lane that they're supposed to be in. Well, and and when we are past our social distancing and people begin to travel more, then you're going to have to deal with all those campers and people pulling, uh, what do you call those, four, three-wheelers, the smaller campers and uh, tour buses and all those things that uh, increase when we get get to uh, what we call a sort of vacation season. That doesn't change the fact that you guys are out there patrolling or that Kelly has people out there assigned to improve the roads. But the, the kind of traffic we have changes as the season changes. And, and as I mentioned, the farm traffic. Uh, if, you know, if you're, if you're behind somebody who has to move his combine from one field to another and he's got to maneuver that road construction also, uh, all kinds of things are kind of converging there. So extra caution for everybody driving. Yeah. Take your time when you get out on the road. Scan ahead. Look and see what's coming up. See what kind of risks that are ahead of you, and that way you can plan accordingly. So, Kelly, are there uh, penalties for uh, breaking? uh, I I guess breaking may not be violating. Violating these work zone rules. instructions yeah yes there there are and and don may have you know better information about you know charges or tickets that could be written but um uh fines do double in work zone areas and um there are significant penalties for people who um uh drive distracted or you know we we're going to be, I was just listening to a, a call from one of my uh, coworkers who's writing an article in Wichita about one of our workers that uh, was bending over to move a traffic cone and got hit, glanced off of his hard hat by someone uh, driving by. Uh, and he was very lucky uh, that he didn't suffer significant damage, but uh, it stunned him quite a bit. Well, and, and, you know, hats off, no pun intended there, but, but great, great shout out and appreciation to the men and women who do this work. Because, uh, lots of times it's hot and miserable, but it's also very dangerous. And, uh, if we, if we do not, uh, take care of our roads, then the danger increases. So, uh, we can't just let it go. And we have to, as, I know both of you have already implied have to take advantage of the season so that the weather is good. It's pretty hard to do some of the things that uh, need to be done in the dead of winter when it's ice or sleet. So we don't, you know, you don't have a lot of options. How about working at night? Are there any regulations about that that are important? Don, well, do you I have any talk- information? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Can I, I, I? Let me see if I can can uh, fun intended uh, put some light on this topic part of it. But uh, yet, when a work zone goes up, we consider it live 
all the time, whether it's day or night. Because I see. supplies can be delivered even if the work zone workers aren't in that work zone working. So that work zone, we consider it to be, uh, quote, uh, set up and going 24-7. Now, there are some projects that will occur uh, because of several factors. Uh, just healthy, uh, it's more healthier for the workers not having them out in the sun that long. The traffic is lighter. The type of work that's being done, uh, those work zones uh, are permitted to work through the night, and then they stop at a early morning hours and get it set back up for the morning traffic. But then they will be expecting deliveries, whether it's rebar, whether it's paint, whether it's concrete, whatever it is, uh, Jersey barriers being delivered during the day. Uh, so I um, know that uh, you and Kelly want to reinforce our work zone awareness, um, the, that the real reason for this program today is to be aware of work zones and the safety uh, and the uh, well-being of all of those people who take their lives in their own hands by standing in the middle of a busy road to try to do their work. So. Uh, Don, you and Kelly uh, talk about this. Well, Kelly, are you uh, there? Why don't you go ahead? Yeah, thanks, Clint East. Uh I just want to, uh, in closing, I can't emphasize enough work zone safety awareness. We currently have several projects in the area. We've got a bridge repair on I-70 in Topeka over Union Road. We've got a big pavement striping project from Holton up to the Nebraska border going on right now. We've got pothole patching on K-4 uh, from Meriden up to K-92. And in a couple of weeks, we'll be doing another overlay project on U.S. 24 between Minokan and Silver Lake. Uh, and we have other ongoing projects, but those are the big ones. And those are going to you know, have trucks and workers out working actually on the road. We really need people to pay attention and to be safe out there. Don? Yeah, yes. Hey, <laughs> and even though we call, uh, we have a, a week that we try to publicize and get the word out about Work Zone Awareness Week, which is uh, the last week of April, the, the first part of May, that April 26th is when it starts. Uh, but this should go on all year long. While these crews are out there working, uh, making our roads safe for us to drive on, uh, we need to be making sure we're watching out for them and keeping them safe. Well, I think that um, we'll do all we can, and I know that Joel will mention this more and more. And if something comes up during this stretch of work zone awareness and all the construction, uh, just just call the radio station. I know Joel will always, always get you on and uh, talk about something that's novel or uh, uh, just a, a special thing you want to emphasize, and uh, certainly we can always work it into timeline. Uh, so thank you both for, for doing this, for sitting on the telephone for an hour, for one thing. And uh, next week, Steve Novak will join me, and we will talk about the Douglas County Historical Society and all the things that they are doing online because they can't have you in the museum right now. This is Timeline. Thank you, Joel, oh, so you're, you're, very, very much you're quite for welcome. helping us do this. You're, and thank you, Kelly, and thank you, Don. Uh, I'll see you next 20. week on Monday, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. Hey, uh, Don, and, Don and Kelly, just so that you know, you guys have my email address as well from uh, our correspondence about this. And if you ever need to get any information out, feel free to send me an email as well. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks, everybody. Yeah. All right, that was Clint Sills and uh, the Timeline Radio Program special here on this Wednesday. We've got to uh, step aside for the top of the hour Fox News in 30 seconds. And then hour number three, Radio for Grown Ups. As we mentioned, we'll talk a little Passover next hour. Uh, the rabbi who usually comes in on Wednesdays can't make it because tonight is Seder night and he's got too much else to do, but we'll talk about it anyway. All that coming up next hour here on FM 1017, 1320 KLWN. Depend on it. 1320 KLWN Lawrence and FM 1017 K269 GP Lawrence. Depend on it.